And on Monday, Conway based home bank shares made its 22nd acquisition, buying Florida's Stonegate Bank for a cool $778.4 million dollars. One of the largest acquisitions in state history. Joining me now is Johnny Allison, Home Bank Shares Chairman. Thank you for being here. Good you to see bet. you. Good to see you. You only come in every other like year or two. You well, need to be a frequent. When we did the last More big frequent. transaction, we came, you invited us down, but you don't invite us that often. I will invite you. You got a standing invitation. <laughs> well, thank you for that. But you're known for picking up uh, banks that are sometimes troubled. You get them for a little bit uh, a good price. You fix them up. You bring them into your portfolio of profitability. Stonegate's not one of those banks. It's a well-run bank with a lot of uh, great profitability. Tell me why this was the right deal at this time. Well, when you look at the scarcity of the big banks in Florida, there's four or five left. I mean, there's not many of those those financial institutions left, and this was the best of the crop. This was, I call it the cream of the crop, the icing on the cake. And I've followed this guy for years, and he's followed us, and I mean, he runs a high-performing bank. We have great asset quality, but his asset quality is better than ours, and he runs good performing numbers. So his philosophy on operating a bank and our philosophy is similar, plus he's in some great markets, and we'll get some in-market consolidations, probably be able to close 14 or 15 branches. So that's big savings to the, to the company. So you're saying Stonegate's going to teach you a thing or two is what you're saying? I think so. <laughs> and, and, you know, interesting, uh, the, the governor was at the, the announcement in the Cuban connection with, mm -hmm. uh, he has the only credit card issued in Cuba. So we'll be going next week to Cuba and uh, meeting the Minister of Finance and uh, having a little rum and smoking some cigars and, and drinking some coffee. I was going to bring that up a little bit later, but oh, we'll segue into that yeah, now. Okay. So, uh, so right now, Cuba, that's a profit center for you guys with the Stonegate acquisition. But So if it's just the status quo, if policy doesn't change, it's still a good place for you guys to be. But if the policy does change, how big do you think that could be? That would really be icing on the cake. That could really be big. That could be that could be very big. However, someone asked me, you say, how much value did you assign to it? And I said, nothing, because I, I don't understand it yet, but maybe by the time I get back, I can give you a report on how Cuba was and what we think we can do with that. All right, well then that'll be an invitation for you to come Thank back you. and talk about that some more. Uh, let's talk about kind of where you're gonna look now for organic growth as well as potential additional acquisitions. You told bank analysts in your analyst call earlier in the week that there's no other kind of dream acquisitions out there at this point in time, but you might do some fill in the blanks here and there. I think that's it. I think some targeted acquisitions in Florida, some three, four, five, six hundred, seven hundred million dollar banks in some markets where we want to muscle up a little bit. As you can see, we ended up with the number one community bank market share. We have one point six billion dollars in Fort Lauderdale County. So that's pretty strong. In Sarasota County, we have the number one market share there too. So lots of deposits in those markets, lots of big boys there, but I think we can play with the big boys. If you think about it, we just, we bought Broward back several years ago and then we closed Landmark recently and then we tacked on today with the, or yesterday with the Stonegate deal, which really muscles us up and makes us a major player in those markets. Your footprint crawls into West Palm Beach. I got to tell you, there's yes. a new resident in Washington, D.C. at 1600 Penn Pennsylvania Avenue that's got a, a weekend place down in West Palm I Beach that. there. I heard that. And you, people who fly in there in their own airplanes uh, talk about him quite often because <laughs> they cl clear the air. <laughs> Uh, did you get a country club membership out of this? No, I haven't yet. Uh, maybe, maybe I, I, might been, be I hadn't been invited there, but some of my friends on some of my new boards that we have been there and yeah. have, have experienced the, the beautiful you home. You need to go there to twist the president's arm on some Dodd-Frank law, don't you think? Well, I think we're going to get some relief there. I just, I'm optimistic that we're going to help on its way, and, and I'm told that there's the Republican votes are there and even Democratic votes to raise the Dodd-Frank from 10 billion to 50 billion. So uh, the Durbin Amendment included in that. So yeah. I'm optimistic that we we'll, that helps on its way. Do you want to see a total repeal of Dodd-Frank or do you just want to see strategic changes in places that you think it's unfair? Well, we're community bank. I mean, we're even though we're 13, 14 billion dollars a day, we're still community bankers. And to be treated like the big Wall Street bankers, we're not them. We're not going to be them. We don't. We don't. We don't aspire to be them. We give money to our local communities. We support our local communities. We live in our local communities. We know. We know where Cabot, Arkansas is. We know where BB is. We know where Fort Lauderdale, Florida is. We understand those markets, and and we live in those markets. So to treat us as a New York bank, I think, is unfair. 
Do you think that you know some markets between Arkansas and Florida? Because you don't have a whole lot in between here and there. Well, we you have got a little a, South we, Alabama. We have a nice presence in South Alabama, and I like that market a lot. Yeah. Uh, I have some friends that, that have a great presence in Mississippi. Who knows down the road? There's, there's five or six banks in the country that have separated themselves from the pack, and Home Bank Shares is one of them, that, that, that we run together, we visit together, we share our ideas together. And who knows, you may see a merger of equals of some of those great institutions that have separated themselves from the pack in the future. Some, some big regional banks. Some big sense. regional banks and make it bigger because I've got friends that have just crossed over the 10 as we've just crossed over the 10. You know, we're all wrestling with the same situation. We could be 20 or 25. Really the steps to go to 30 or 40 from here are not near as big as they were to get from zero to 10. So, but I don't have aspirations of being, I'd love to run a good community bank that's $25 billion and pay my shareholders a good dividend and have fun and enjoy life. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, and be one of the most profitable banks in the nation, or continue to be one of the most profitable banks in the yeah, nation. Well, you're doing all right. Y'all did $177 million last year in net income, if I recall correctly. Well, we did, and Forbes just picked us as the eighth best bank in America of all banks. So that's quite a compliment. So you got a little room to grow is what you're saying? Yeah, we got seven more <laughs> slots to fill out. <laughs> all right. John Allison, as always, hey, great bro, to visit with you. you. Congratulations hey, on the big you. deal. Yes, thank you. I'm very all proud right. of the trade. Yep. All right. We'll have you back soon. Thanks. All right. We're back with more right after this.